Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today we've got another Mustang Mach-E video and uh, we have an exciting Blue Cruise update. My 2022 Mach-E just got the Blue Cruise 1.3 update. I've been trying it out over the last week or so and I uh, wanted to share that with you and share my thoughts about it. So before we actually take the car out on the road, there's some backstory I wanna give you about Blue Cruise. Also wanna talk about what other vehicles does it come on? How much does it cost? What features does it have and not have? Um, so I'll chapter the video, so if you want to skip ahead to the driving experience, feel free to do that. Uh, but otherwise, uh, let's talk about a little more backstory. So my 2022 originally came with Blue Cruise 1.0. Um, that was the first version of Blue Cruise that was really available, um, and it just got updated to Blue Cruise 1.3. So what's the deal with the other versions? So 1.1, um, I haven't found any official release notes on it. Ford's website, it goes straight from 1.0 to 1.2 and then to 1.3. So 1.2 was released for 2023 model year cars up until about June of that year. And then after mid 2023, um, they got version 1.3. Um, all 2024 models are shipping with version 1.3. Um, so on their Ford's website, uh, it says, you know, Q&A, what's the difference between the versions? So 1.0 is hands-free adaptive cruise control with lane centering on pre-qualified sections of highway. So it's kind of combining those technologies and then using the eye tracking camera in the car to allow you to take your hands off the wheel. Um, and so uh, as long as you keep looking forward, eyes on the road, then it'll stay engaged and the car will kind of drive itself basically. Um, there's times where you need to intervene. You might leave a section of Blue Cruise Highway where it's not pre-qualified anymore. You might have construction, you might need to make an exit, um, you needed to make lane changes previously. So all that is where you're gonna intervene. Um, also wanna note that even Blue Cruise 1.0, the original, also had the capability to auto resume when you're in kind of stop and go traffic. So let's say you have Blue Cruise on, uh, traffic comes to a screeching halt or even a slow halt, and you're just stopped on the interstate, it'll say auto resume on there and so when traffic starts moving again, the car will automatically start going again. It's still doing all your lane centering, everything's hands-free. Um, so in heavy traffic, um, that's an awesome feature. That's still there now, but even Blue Cruise 1.0 had that. 1.2 added lane repositioning. So when you're going by a large semi or you know other large vehicle, you know, you might want to you know give yourself a little extra space so you kind of hug the left or right side of the lane. Um, and it also added lane change capability. Um, so you can just put the blinker on to initiate it and it will uh, go into the left or right lane depending on which way you're going. Um, and then 1.3, which is the newest version, uh, is a performance improvement on top of that, as well as um, it deals with narrow lanes better and curves better. Some other notes, Blue Cruise, uh, where you're hands-free, that's really on all those pre-qualified sections of highway. So Ford has a map on their site, um, but check out you know where you live if you're considering this feature and just see how often will you actually make use of that. If you road trip a lot, you'll probably make use of it. If your commute is on one of these pre-qualified sections, which is most of the highways, then that'll be a, a nice thing to have. Now, if you're not on one of those pre-qualified sections, then you're kind of back to uh, lane centering and adaptive cruise control, uh, but you need to keep your hands on the wheel. So if you take your hands off the wheel, um, after five to 10 seconds, it'll kind of uh, start making a beeping tone at you and saying like, hey, you need to put your hands on the wheel. And so it'll sense your hands are there by, you know, any, you know, giving it a little movement into the wheel. But it's actually still pretty decent in those cases, um, you know, a two lane highway or, you know, maybe a highway that isn't a full interstate. Um, it's still nice to have, but it's really not the full Blue Cruise experience. Um, so what vehicles does it come on? So it actually, um, you know, I think at least in the EV community, a lot of folks, including myself, are like, oh yeah, this is Mach-E and F-150 Lightning and that's it. But actually it's on some of Ford's gas vehicles as well. So the traditional F-150, um, also the Ford Explorer and the Ford Expedition pricing. So my Mach-E, uh, this, this is a 2022 and it's the premium trim. So in, in that model year, that came with Blue Cruise. Um, and it also came with a three year free trial of Blue Cruise. So I didn't pay anything else for Blue Cruise. 
and um, it's good until next next June 2025. So I still have another year. So even if I don't get any more updates at all, at least I got through 1.3, which is really the latest software. Um, so if you're purchasing a vehicle now, um, you get a 90 day trial, but if you wanna lock in a slightly lower price, you can get $700 uh, for one year or $2,100 for three years. Um, and if you don't do that, then you uh, can have the option to buy it at $75 a month or $800 a year. All right, we just got the Blue Cruise update. Um, this is gonna be my first time using the new Blue Cruise 1.3. There we go. Okay, and right away you notice on the screen there's two little arrows left and right. Those weren't there previously. Speed limit changed here, we're gonna slow down. Um, Otherwise, it looks mostly the same. I feel like the car in the middle is the blue color is maybe a little more vibrant or something. Um, so we got a truck we're coming up on here. So let's see if it if it hugs the lane to the left a little bit or not. The truck's kind of... Oh, yep, there it goes. So it sensed the truck there. And we're staying more in the left of the lane. And the truck is actually, you know, pretty centered or slightly right in his lane. But yeah, just cruising along here. Um, the very first time I tried it, I, I tried a lane change um, and I put the turn signal stock all the way down um, and it will do the lane change. So it's lane changing right now, uh, but it has no way to turn the turn signal back off because the stock is physically pushed down. So all you need to do is just tap the turn signal. It's pretty straightforward. Um, just like, you know, even when you're not in Blue Cruise, if you just tap the turn signal, it'll, it'll blink a few times. So now it'll blink, um, it'll say preparing lane change, and then it'll move over and then shut off the turn signal once it merges over. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's really seamless. Um, it's worked really well so far. I haven't had any problems with that. There's actually been a few cases where, you know, I kind of needed to get over somewhat quickly, and it was able to do that. Um, kind of, you know, I was behind a little bit slower car, so then it sped up to the set speed I had kind of as it was making the lane change, so that was really impressive. But yeah, and then just generally, it just feels a lot more stable, a lot more confident in the lane. Um, it felt like before it was making a bunch of like little minor corrections, kind of like trying to stay perfectly in the center, where now I feel like it's, it's, doing like maybe an average or something over a slightly longer period of time so it's not making these little teeny adjustments which before you didn't really think about um but you know you're just looking at the wheel now it's like the wheel is hardly moving like it's just it's almost like the car got an alignment or something i mean it obviously didn't um but the system just seems more confident and more stable the other big update um, with the newer Blue Cruise, besides the lane change, is also, um, it'll, it's called lane repositioning. So it'll move you over in the lane left or right if you're going by a large vehicle. Uh, specifically, semi-trucks is where you'll notice it the most. And on the display, you'll actually see where it'll shift over um, left or right in the lane. It's nice to, to be able to have the car shift over because there's a lot of times where you know, you can yourself manually reposition the car if you want to, um, and a Blue Cruise will stay engaged. But now the car is going to automatically do that. So before I would move it over a little bit in the lane. Now I don't need to do that at all. There's a couple sections of highway um, where I ran the same route, Blue Cruise 1.0 versus the new 1.3. And it seems like it's staying engaged longer. There was a few sections where it would actually go back to um, lane centering where you need your hands on the wheel. Um, there's one section where it hasn't done that for me. It's just stayed in Blue Cruise that whole time. So that's really cool. I'm just going to move over lanes here because I want to get over one. Preparing lane change makes the lane change. You can see on the screen there's it has like the little um, dash line that you're, shows you're kind of, the car is kind of moving across. So that's kind of a nice animation there. Um, you know, the animations are really very basic. There's nothing crazy going on here, like, you know, any of the Tesla vision where you see all the cars on the road and that kind of stuff. 
Um, here in this system, the only thing you see is if there's a car in front of you. This section of interstate, it's actually a speed limit, it's 80 miles an hour. So we're going to set 80 here. Um, and with Blue Cruise 1.3, it's still the same uh, 80 mile an hour max uh, speed for Blue Cruise hands-free. So technically, you can actually get it up to 81. So if you engage at 80 or lower, you can set 81 and it'll maintain 81 hands-free. But if it, if it leaves hands-free for any reason, it won't re-engage um, until you drop back down to 80. All right, so hopefully this kind of helps answer some questions, kind of give you a little bit of a feel for, you know, what the system is capable of, what the improvements are. Um, and so, you know, my final thoughts, 1.3 is a huge improvement over 1.0. Um, that being said, it's obviously still a long way to go before we're fully autonomous. Um, Jim Farley has actually been quoted saying in a couple of years, uh, which would mean 2026-ish, um, we could be at a point where Ford system would be level three capable, which would basically mean you're able to take your eyes off the road, which is kind of crazy to think about. But, you know, conditions would still have to be, you know, good. There might be some cases where you will have to re-engage with the system at some point. Based on the trajectory of where they're going, um, this is a huge improvement over 1.0. Um, and you could see in another two years, a Blue Cruise 1.5, 1.6, maybe they'll even go to 2.0 by that point or something. Um, you could kind of see, yeah, that might be possible. Also want to say, you know, kind of what's, what's the biggest difference other than the features between Blue Cruise 1.0 and 1.3? It's still a very similar system, uh, but it felt like 1.0 was great when the traffic was really light or when the traffic was really heavy where you're in stop and go traffic. Um, it handled both of those cases pretty well. Um, 1.3 improves a lot more on when traffic's like moderately heavy where you know before you were intervening a lot if you're you know going by a lot of semi semis or you're kind of just stuck with cars always left or right of you it's going to take a lot better care of you being able to reposition the car in the lane um, you know give you a lane change so you can you know get around maybe some slower moving vehicles and just make that whole process a lot more seamless um, the system is a lot more confident a lot more planted in the lane all that being said if they told me, you know, hey, you're going to have to pay to keep using this. You know, like I said, I have another free year, but let's just pretend that I have to pay for it right now. Based on my use case, I'm probably not going to pay 75 bucks a month or $800 a year for this. It's still a great software system. I'm just not going to use it often enough to justify that price. I think my commute or if I had a bunch of road trips coming up, um, then I could see justifying the price. But my commute doesn't involve... The interstate on a daily basis. I still get on the interstate a couple times a week to run errands. Those cases are it's really nice to have, but is it $75 a month nice to have? Probably not. The other reason besides that is just I went two years uh, before I got an update, which is a long time. Now, the update's great. Um, I didn't have to pay anything for it, um, and it's a big update. It makes a, it makes a big difference. Uh, but that's a long time to be paying for something and not be getting any updates. Um, now, I don't necessarily want an update every day because those are the type of updates you're probably not going to notice much difference. It's kind of fun and more exciting to have a, a big update where you can have tangible improvements. Um, but I think if Ford really wants people to be paying for this monthly or even be paying a few years uh, kind of prepaid, you know, they're going to need to demonstrate that they can update the system on a more regular basis. Um, even if the updates aren't big, um, I think the ability of, oh, let's let's just say we found a safety issue with Blue Cruise 1.3 or something, for example, or we have an update to make the system so much safer, but then you wait around for another year, two years before you get the update, I'm not sure I like the idea of that as a consumer. All that being said, Ford was trying to roll out the 1.3 update sooner. Um, actually, this forum post here in September of 2023, um, Ford saying, hey, we're gonna be rolling Blue Cruise out to older model years um, in the coming weeks. Well, it's now July and I finally got the update. Um, Jim Farley and some other interview talks about they had to delay that rollout. It's a very complex update. 
Um, they wanted to refine and simplify the software before rolling it out. So I totally respect all that. I can understand that, but it's almost a year later. I mean, it's August now. And so, you know, we're a month away from it being September of 2024. So that took a long time to get rolled out. Um, newer vehicles, you know, the 2023s um, and 2024s, you know, had 1.2 and 1.3 updates. So personally, I don't have any problem with the newest model year having the newest software. I think that makes sense. You're kind of paying a premium to get the newest thing. But, you know, maybe after six months or, you know, at the end of that model year, when it's time to go to the next model year, it'd be nice if all the prior models got at least that newest software. That would kind of be my bare minimum. Um, so I'll have to see when I get to the end of my trial, you know, kind of what happens. Um, is the pricing change? Is there some new feature? You know, maybe Blue Cruise 1.4, 1.5 is out by then. And if it adds some more significant updates, uh, maybe off highway, that seems unlikely just because they're so focused on on highway updates, which is fine. Uh, but if it, you know, oh, you can take your eyes off the road in a couple of these situations or, uh, you know, the car will move over if it sees, you know, a vehicle on the shoulder or, um, you know, the car will automatically lane change for you in these certain situations. You know, if there's some bigger updates and I can download it today and pay X number of dollars um, to get that update now and continue my trial, I would consider it. Obviously, I'll keep you guys posted on Blue Cruise if there's updates um, kind of as that happens. All right, well, I think that's it for today's video. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you wanna see more content like this and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.